A good garden tool can make your job in the garden much easier, more efficient, and more enjoyable. With all the tools on the market, it can be a little overwhelming. I'm going to share with you the tools that I use on a day-to-day -day basis in my garden that are great for small gardens or even the beginner. Then later in this video, I'm going to share with you the tools that I don't use every day, but I wouldn't garden without them. If I could only have one tool in the garden, I'd want it to be a good hand trowel. Hand trowels are one of the most versatile tools that you could have in the garden. They're great for doing your transplants. You can make little furrows with them to plant your seedlings in. They're great for digging up weeds. And you can also work soil amendments into the soil. Honestly, you could garden with just this one tool. When you're picking out your hand trowel, of course you want it to be comfortable. And if it has a little bit of shape to it, a little bit of curve, it's going to conform to your hand a little bit better and be more comfortable. You also don't want a really sharp blunt end because a lot of times you'll put your hand on the top of that and it can get pretty sore. A nice sharp edge is another thing that's really great with hand trowels. Hand trowels will come with measurements on them. And honestly, I can't say that I've ever really used that, but it might come in handy if you're planting bulbs. They also will sometimes come with a serrated edge and there again it's not something that I use very often but it can be used for cutting twine or breaking through a root. I love the trowels that are made of metal rather than the plastic. They hold up a lot better to prying. Plus I like the edges that can be sharpened. Just using a file once a year keeps them in top condition. This makes it to where they can really penetrate into that soil really easy. If they have a wood handle just make sure that you use a wood conditioner at least once a year. Another one of my really favorite garden tools that I wouldn't garden without are these flexible buckets. Their uses are endless. You can haul your leaves in them, compost in them, soil amendments in them, and I really love to put all of my tools that I'm going to need for the day so that I can haul it all out at once into my garden. I also like to leave one that's labeled clean only, and I'll put my lettuces or clean vegetables in these so that I don't get that cross-contamination from the compost or chicken manure or whatever I'm hauling. I really love to have one of these in the garden at all times so that when I'm plucking weeds I can just toss them in here and then when it's full I'll just haul it out to the compost pile and then bring some compost back to the garden. I love these bigger buckets for mixing my potting mixes in but remember the bigger they are the heavier they're going to be. So if I was only to have one bucket I'd pick a medium size because it seems to be the most versatile. If you have a garden you'll need to water and one of the best things that I've found for watering my garden is a brass shut off valve made by DRAM and a diffuser and this one's a lemon head made by DRAM also. I can control the amount of water by the shutoff valve whether I want a light soft rain or if I want to water a little bit quicker. There's all sorts of different types of diffusers. You've got a red head which is really the finest and they're great for using on young tinder seedlings or you have the silver head that lets out a lot more water. These last a long time as long as you remove them before we have a freeze. I'll take these diffusers right off the top and I'll actually use just the shutoff valve if I want to shoot water long distances or spray something off like carrots. This does a really great job all by itself. I'm a little hard on my tools and so when I use the water wands I seem to go through two or three of those during the season. Of course we do a lot here with the nursery and everything but this one here I've had for over 12 years. I'm really hard on it and it's still going strong. Another great tool to have in your little garden toolkit are these pointed clippers. These are awesome for clipping herbs, doing deadheading, and getting those vegetables that you need to cut rather than just pull off like peppers, eggplants, and squash. These are indispensable in the garden. Another very useful tool to have in the garden is this three-tined cultivating rake. This is really great if you have a crust on top of your soil and you can use this just to break that soil loose so that water and air can penetrate more easily. They're also great if you want to do just a general broadcast of seeds. Sprinkle your seeds over the surface and just use this to break them right into the soil. I like this especially for when I use a dry fertilizer. I sprinkle that over the surface and use this just to rake that fertilizer in because that fertilizer has to have contact with the soil in order for it to break down and be usable for the plants. This next item isn't necessarily a tool, but it all depends on how you look at it. So it's a mailbox, and it's a mailbox that I have on the entrance into my garden. And I really like this because I can put my tools inside this or things that I need, like markers and tags and twine, the stuff that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. This will store it right next to the garden and keep it out of the weather. It's a great storage device. Weeds are a part of the garden, and I like to keep them out. And my favorite way to do this is with this hula hoe 
or also known as a stirrup hoe. If you keep the edges sharp on this, it'll slide through those weeds like butter. I can do my entire garden beds, or at least the rows, in a matter of minutes. So this really makes my work very efficient. The way this long handled tool works is you slide it back and forth. It's just a back and forth motion over the surface, knocking off the weeds. Any tools that have a wooden handle, we want to make sure that they have a nice smooth surface because that's a lot easier on our hand. You can sand it down and then use a wood conditioner or even a wax to keep them in good shape. Frost blanket is another great tool to have on hand. It's really good if you have an early frost coming and you want to protect those tinder crops for just a few more weeks or even a month longer. You can just put this over them and it'll protect them up to about 12 degrees. I also like this for growing through the winter time. Just to protect things like your broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbages from those deep hard freezes. Frost blanket can also be used to protect young, tender, newly planted seedlings. This will give you a little jump start in planting in the springtime when you put a row cover over the top of them during the nighttime. Felco Bypass Pruners. Now these are my favorite type of pruners. You get what you pay for. They do cost a little bit more, but they last you a very long time. These pruners here are 20 years old and they're still going strong. The nice thing about these, and these are an F13, they're for bigger hands like mine, and they'll cut up to one and a half inches of a branch. And that's a pretty good size for a hand pruner. Felco pruners will come in all different types of sizes to meet your budget as well as your hand shape, size, and whether you're left-handed or right-handed. They even have one that has a rotating handle on it that's exceptional for those who have small hands or arthritis, and it really cuts back on fatigue. Another feature that you'll find on your Felcos is a little notch right here for cutting wire. And that is really handy sometimes. When I'm out in the orchard and I'm doing a lot of pruning, I like to keep the little diamond sharpening stone on me so that I can keep those blades nice and sharp throughout the day, as well as some lubricating spray that really keeps those pruners in good working order. If you do a lot of transplanting of leeks, garlic, or even plug transplants, then dibbers are a great help for this. They're simply used by just punching a hole into the soil, popping your transplant in the ground, putting some soil around it, and you're done. Japanese hand hoe is a great little tool for getting weeds, especially in tight places. It can just reach in there around plants without damaging the root system. It's also really good to just slide underneath your mulch to loosen those weeds to make it a lot easier to pull. I love using it for making little trenches to put my seeds in or loosening up the soil. I love these pump up sprayers. I use them all the time when I'm using a compost tea spray or a liquid fertilizer sprayed right on the foliar of my plants. It's a lot quicker in my bigger garden than it would be if I was using just a little hand pump sprayer. You don't want to store any of your leftover liquid because that can wreck the gaskets and even clog up the orifices. You want to make sure that you rinse out your tank really well as well as the hose and even using some soapy water will do a good job. A good sturdy digging fork is excellent for loosening soil, working in compost slightly into that soil, and it's great for lifting root crops like potatoes. And if you don't have a pitchfork, this is excellent for turning your compost pile. Good quality tools can last a lifetime if taken care of. Make sure that your wooden handles are waxed or oiled, your blades cleaned and sharpened, and most of all, keep them out of the weather, which I'm a little bad at. Obviously, there are so many garden tools to make your gardening jobs easier, but these gardening tools that I talked about today, I wouldn't garden without. I'll put a link in the description below of where you can find all of these great tools. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I truly hope that this helps you in your gardening ventures. And I'll see you in our next video. I have about 10 or 12 pruners that I like to keep on hand. I keep one in my bedroom, one in the bathroom, and even one in my purse. Bingo! <laughs>